Hello boys of class 6, St. Augustine School. I'm Mr. Rocky here. I'm making this short video for you so that you actually understand your assignment number 11 and assignment number 12, which is based on the chapter called Sets. And that's on page number 82 of your book and the chapter number is 10. What is a set? In simple, we can say that a set is simply listing down all the names of the objects, numbers, alphabets, etc, etc. But if we have to define a set, then we can say that a set is a collection of well-defined objects. It's important for us here to understand the term well-defined. Now, what is well-defined? Well-defined in sets means that it has to be absolutely clear whether a particular thing actually belongs to the set or not. I would like to explain well-defined by using these two examples here. Let's think if you have to make a set of beautiful flowers. Now, the word beautiful is a very relative term. In other words, there is no measurement for beautiful. What is beautiful for me may be ugly for you. Therefore, when you make a set, you may have a few names there. At the same time, I may have different names of them. Therefore, the two of us will not agree to it. So we cannot make a set which is similar as far as beautiful flowers are concerned. Similarly, if you use clever boys, set of clever boys in our class, for example, you may name the ones who come first, second, third in class, but are they the only boys who are clever? Think about another situation where you have a thief. Isn't a thief a clever person? He's got so many ideas on how to steal, which automatically means that he is clever. Therefore, such words where you have beautiful, clever, handsome, tall, short, fat, thin, these are relative terms. Therefore, we cannot make a set out of these. So, keeping this in mind, we have done exercise number one, where you can, you can see that whether you can make a set or not. So, you can go through it and have a look at it. What I want to discuss in this video is the different methods of writing down a set. You can see here that the first method is called the description form. Now what is a description form? If you look at the example that I've given you here, you can see that I've written set A is equal to set of natural numbers up to 5. Now if you look at this, these are all in words. All in words means that we are describing. Therefore, the name description form has come. Now, when you write down a set, it is very important for us to know that we are supposed to name the set with a capital letter, followed by an equal to sign, and then write whatever is there in inside the bracket, curly bracket. Coming to number two, which is the roster form. Now, in the roster form, what we write down is the exact names, numbers, alphabets that are supposed to be there. So natural numbers up to 5 would mean 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Therefore, set A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can see over here, I have named the set in capital letters followed by equal to sign. Then all the elements or all the, the list of numbers are inside this bracket, curly bracket, 
and all the elements are separated by commas. This is very important form. Most of the time we will be using the roster form to solve the sums based on sets. The third method is the set builder form. Now what is the set builder form? Now what I have written here is set A is equal to, it, this is read as x is such that x is an, a natural number less than 6. It's difficult for you to understand right now because you have not done algebra as such. But anyway, to shorten it, the set, build, the set builder form, we try as far as possible to use signs and symbols to denote the particular set. The same set can also be written as x is such that x is an element of natural numbers. You remember n stands for natural numbers. The e that I have written here means element of and x is less than 6. So natural numbers less than 6 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In this video, I want to explain what is an element. Now, if you look at the example that has been given here, set A is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now, this is in the roster form where the exact numbers have been given. So, all the members, we can call them members of the set or we can call them elements of the set. 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10, in other words, belong to set A. So, they may be called members of the set or they may also be called elements of the set. The symbol for element is given here. It's written with an E like this and it stands for element of and an E which has been crossed stands for not an element of. So coming here, we can see that it's written 2 is an element of A and we can see that 2 belongs to set A, therefore we can call 2 an element of A. Similarly, if you look at 2 and 6 here, then both of them belong to set A. So we are saying 2 and 6 are elements of set A. But if you look at the last one, 7 is not an element of A because 7 does not belong to this set. In this video, I want to explain further on how you are supposed to write down a set. Let's take the first one here. Set A is letters in the word football. Now this method is the descriptive or description method. I'm converting a description method into a roster form. Set A is equal to F-O-T-B-A-L. There are two important things here. The first one is that you can see, though in the question it has been given in capital letters, I have written all the alphabets in small letters. So, what is important is that all elements are supposed to be written in small letters. The second thing here is, you can see that we've got a double O here and a double L here. But when I actually write it down, I have only one O and one L. What is important here is, we are not supposed to repeat any element while writing the roster form. So that's why we don't have a double O here and a double L here. Let's take example 2. In example 2, we've got first three counting numbers. And the first, this is the descriptive form or the description form. And this one here is the roster form. When we write down the roster form, so first three counting numbers will be 1, 2 and 3. Or I have written 3, 2, 1. In other words, I have jumbled up the numbers. So it does not have to be in a systematic order, but I can write it down as 3, 2, 1.
now we are in the different types of sets so the first one we are going to discuss today is the finite and the infinite set now what does the word finite mean finite means that something that you can count and infinite means something that you cannot count because it goes on and on so an example of a finite set would be let's say natural numbers up to 10 so I can write this set down as set A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, up to 10. Infinite set is something that you cannot count. Therefore, let's say we just have set of natural numbers. Now, set of natural numbers can be written as 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 dot. There is no ending. So there is no ending number. So this is finite set. In other words, we can simply say we can, in finite sets, we can count the number of elements. In infinite set, we cannot count the number of elements. Coming to empty set or what we also call a null set. What is an empty set? Let's say if you are told all the boys in class 6A who are 10 meters tall. Now, we don't have anybody who is 10 meters tall. Therefore, this becomes an empty set. There are no names over there at all. Or let's say something like counting numbers between 2 and 3. There are no numbers counting numbers between 2 and 3. Because soon after 3, sorry, soon after 2, 3 counts. So, there are no sets. Empty sets are written as set A is equal to only the brackets, nothing inside the bracket. So this is the way to write an empty set. Or at the same time, we can write it as set A is a null set. This is the, this is the symbol of a null set. We carry on with the different types of sets. Now in this video, we've got equal sets and equivalent sets. I think an example should be good enough to understand. Let's say we've got set A equals 1, 2 and 3. And set B as 3, 2, 1. Now what we see here is the elements are exactly the same. So when the elements are exactly the same, then we can call it an equal set. Whereas an equivalent set, an example of that, let's say we've got A, B, C, and let's say set B is equal to X, Y, Z. The elements here are completely different, but the number of elements are the same. So, when number of elements are the same, then we can call it an equivalent set. Coming to disjoint sets and overlapping sets. Let's take an example. Let's say we've got set A is 5, 6, 7. And set B is equal to 8, 9, 10. None of the elements over here are common. That's why we call it a disjoint set. Whereas in overlapping sets, let's say we've got 4, 5, 6 and set B is 6, 7, 8. Now over here, 6 is common to both of them. Therefore, they are called overlapping sets. So in this video, I am talking about cardinal number of a set. Now what is a cardinal number? Let's take an example. If set A is given as A, E, I, O, U. This is in the roster form. So the cardinal number means the number of elements that are there in the set. So there are five elements in the set. 
Therefore, the cardinal number of this set A will be equal to 5. Now, there is a particular way of writing it. We write it as small n with a common bracket. Then write down the name of the set. Close the bracket. This is read as cardinal number of set A is equal to how many elements? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 elements. So we simply write 5. No brackets to be written here.